Greetings and welcome back to War Always Changes. We have an exciting Let's Play today, and a very unique one at that. We are actually participating in a roleplay event in Conflict of Nations World War III. This is taking place on the NICK Nick Discord server, founded by the content creator of Conflict of Nick on YouTube. Never having been in any sort of video game roleplay event before, this is pretty exciting for me. And while I wasn't initially planning on playing in this roleplay event, I was asked to join when they were trying to fill up the last few spots of the game, so I accepted. I initially filled out my application as Egypt, but that was actually filled as I was writing it, so I switched to applying for Libya. It was actually interesting reading the first few articles on Libya and learning more about the nation in order to effectively roleplay as it. And while I was satisfied with the final draft, I wish I had initially played on the two administration dynamic that is currently taking place there. Here's how the application went. Libya has been in a state of fragility ever since the justified takedown of the wicked Muammar Gaddafi in 2011. The illegitimate government, led by the tyrannical Khalifa Hifter and his militias, have been causing misery to our proud people for many years. The UN and myself have been trying to hold elections without success until now and elections are scheduled for December 24th. With the help of the UN, we will bring peace and stability back to Libya. And once, once we reach an agreement with the administration in the East, we will draft a new constitution and have a wholly recognized prime minister elected. Things remain relatively non-violent aside from some militia activities since the October 2020 ceasefire. While we received much global support from the UN, Turkey, and others, our relation with some countries are tense. Egypt and the UAE led an assault on the illegitimate government of Tripoli in April of 2019, and foreign actors involved with inciting insurrection are unacceptable. We will defend our country to the bitter end and will strive to build back better. With things looking better on the horizon with the upcoming elections, we are also focusing on once again becoming a country with a strong oil supply. Much work will be needed to improve our infrastructure and invest in the heavy industry needed for oil collection and refining. Soon, we will be able to compete with the UAE in oil supply, and our citizens will be safer and more comfortable than in times past. As a disclaimer, I will not be giving any actual political opinions during the series. Everything in this Discord and out of it will be purely for the sake of role-playing, and I will do my best to study the histories, political structures, and cultures of whatever country I play in order to best portray what they may do in real life. With this said, I got accepted as Libya and went to work building arms industries and creating ties with Turkey. They were very happy to work with me, and this makes sense historically since Turkey helped the UN-backed administration of Tripoli back in 2019. The Eastern government, with the help of Egypt and the United Arab Emirates, launched an offensive to try to capture Tripoli which failed because Tripoli had the help of Turkey as well as troops and mercenaries from Syria. And that is the beautiful thing about playing as Libya. While realistically it may be split along different lines politically, I have complete control to roleplay as both the UN administration as well as the Eastern government. That means I can get favors from both sides of the spectrum until I hold elections that will effectively choose a side for Libya. And while all of this is make-believe, and nothing I say should be taken as fact or as a super accurate history lesson, I will provide sources below to some of the stuff that I have learned. As you can see here, we are building up our troops on the eastern border just in case Egypt attacks us because of our western government. And while no one can declare war on players until at or after day 30, I might as well do some troop buildup there if I do choose to align Libya with the West. But generally speaking, things are going well for Libya. I've been talking with a few people and have Turkey as a strong ally. 
From what I know, Turkey is another one of those nations that can play both sides, but they are honestly probably more Eastern aligned. Regardless, we are going to need a lot of help if we are going to move past our level 1 arms industries and low level troops. Here are a couple of my articles as Libya. August Press Release Tahir El Sanu, UN Ambassador, Libya's Western Administration based in Tripoli, the Libyan Reconstruction. We are taking steps to rebuild our nation on a daily basis with the great efforts of our allies in the UN and our hardworking citizens. Industry and infrastructure are slowly approaching normal levels as we work to improve the quality of life for all peoples in Libya. One of our strongest allies, Turkey, has been working closely with us and they have our most humble thanks for their assistance. We will continue to strengthen ties with them as we rebuild our country so we can stand on our own two feet. Agreements are in the works for potential technology trades in the mid-future. While things are relatively peaceful due to the ceasefire with the East, we eagerly await the elections in late December so that Libya may once again be a unified government. Official Address General Khalifa Haftar Libya's Eastern Administration Reconstruction and Reunification Despite the desperate attempts from the UN to destroy Libya and our way of life, we are on a path to recovery and perhaps to future peace. Our citizens must suffer no more, and peace will be achieved either through the liberation of Tripoli or through the election of a unifying leader. While they have assisted us greatly in the past, no foreign allies are currently in the East. We will continue to build ties with Egypt, Russia, and the UAE as we move towards Libya's reunification. Military infrastructure, as well as civilian, is being rebuilt at the quickest pace we can manage. Libya will once again be a great nation after the oil industry is rebuilt and a true leader, such as myself, is elected. I promise our people that come December, the quality of life and stability of our proud nation will improve greatly. As you can see here, our troops have arrived where we were rallying them, which takes a lot longer than I'm used to since this is a one-time speed game. We have the max level arms industries we can build at the moment. Since we are a non-power, we will have to get investment from someone, probably Turkey for the uh, first one. And I'm thinking we will go heavy air superiority fighters since they are tough to beat without strong SAMs or frigates. Also, we will at some point need an officer to represent our leadership at different levels, which might be kind of expensive. Good things are happening, and we have gotten investments from Algeria, Turkey, and even Pakistan. I'm not sure what to do with Chad, as a few people seem to be against them, so maybe I'll just stay neutral with them for now. We just need to focus on getting as many investments as possible to strengthen our country. Then, when the time comes, choose a side. We will hold an election, and hopefully we will choose the winning side. And I gotta say, folks, there is so much happening in the background that you don't see. So many Discord DMs, and a lot of time spent in the OOC chat. I'm just happy that there hasn't been any drama or disputes yet. I guess being the underdog is working out so far. Well, the truly unexpected happened. I went from being a non-power to being one of the most powerful nations. From what I've heard, this was due to the fact that the person role-playing as Russia was not actually role-playing actively enough and was quite rude to the moderators. 
so they were kicked from the game and I was asked if I wanted to fill their place. I said yes. This came up rather suddenly, so I had to finish up with Libya on my phone. Now, since I had been building up industry, the citizens were happier and things had been relatively peaceful in my version of Libya. Due to this, I thought it fitting to hold a snap election early to elect a leader before I left as the player role-playing as the nation. Luckily for the eastern countries, the people chose General Haftar in a landslide. Now it's still up to the next player that gets Libya to continue being east aligned, but hopefully this will push them in that direction. Breaking. Libya has held a snap election for the new central government of Libya and has elected Khalifa Haftar as the new prime minister. A new constitution has been drafted immediately following and the office of the executive branch will be based in Tripoli. Since the 2020 ceasefire and the rebuilding of the oil industry, tensions cooled off to a point where the former Western and Eastern administrations felt comfortable enough to move the elections to August. Haftar won in a landslide with his unifying me message and patriotism. We will no longer have any UN influence in our country, but we will not seek hostility with them either. Haftar said in a statement following his appointment as Prime Minister. He won 68% of the vote versus his rival, Tahir al Sanu. Much political organization still needs to be done in the wake of the shockingly quick reconstruction of Libya's political system. But better times yet still may be on the horizon. I am disappointed that a more moderate leader wasn't elected, but we must respect the wishes of the Libyan people, said Stephanie Williams, a UN special advisor. All embassies, such as the Italian embassy, still remain in Tripoli and will likely not be removed as Haftar continues to shift his goals towards peace and prosperity for Libya. I don't think that this early election was too terribly unrealistic, but at the end of the day it's a non-power so it won't affect events on the world stage anyway. But here we are folks. We now have the reins of Russia. I can see that the previous player was hard focusing on arms industries. That's good. I shouldn't be too far behind. They researched National Guard and air superiority fighters. As you may know from my very first video on this channel, I love National Guard. And ASFs are a good choice since my country is uh, so big. And while players on the Nick Discord might get an idea as to what I'm doing if they do happen to see this video, I'm not really worried about it. Not only will I be making these videos lagging behind the actual gameplay, I'm not sure it would help the enemy if they did know exactly what I was doing. And any friendly nations certainly don't need to worry, as I won't be putting our DMs in, the, in these videos unless it's funny or relevant. And I likely will only be putting public knowledge in this series unless it is information regarding the Western countries. Now that I have covered the major power-up in our nation position and have looked at what we have to work with, I'll show you my first article role-playing as Russia. Again, it's worth noting that this is a video game and this is a role-play game. I try to do research on in real life events to role play as accurately as I can, but there are some element elements of make believe and maybe I'll do stuff that Russia wouldn't actually do. But hey, who cares? Let's see the article. Breaking from Interfax, Putin has recovered from brain cancer. In a shocking report, Putin has now been released from the Petrovsky Varada Medical Center earlier this morning. Reportedly, he had been suffering from a golf ball sized tumor in his brain, making his cognitive abilities lesser and seriously threatening his life. The possibility of surviving cancer at this stage is less than 30%, but our strong willed leader pulled through. This cancer was likely the reason for the lack of addresses and statements from the president, as well as the disarray in higher command and almost irrational statements from the Kremlin at times. President Putin is now at the Kremlin and is almost completely recovered from surgery. He is full of energy and vigor and is ready to be back at the helm of this country once again, said a staffer from the Kremlin. A statement from the president is scheduled tomorrow and we anxiously wait to hear it, 
we will be covering it live at this address. Since the previous player had taken some very unfortunate actions while roleplaying as Russia, such as aggression towards China for some reason, I had to take drastic measures to distance myself from Russia's previous actions under that player. And with that lore established, and me at the helm, it was time to get to work creating strong bonds with other nations. Turkey was the first to reach out, and they were very supportive of Putin's full recovery. We almost immediately establish ties, and they will be a great ally in the future, if they do choose to stick with the East. Belarus was already in a coalition with Russia, as per the RP rules, it is allowed, and they will be role-playing as the puppet state of Russia. This will be pretty convenient if I choose to take the northern Baltic states. But I wonder why Kazakhstan isn't in the coalition yet. It would truly suck if they were inactive, because swapping out inactive players for those who are not yet in the RP has created some challenges with other countries being inactive, by creating a sense of being left behind and having to get caught up on all of the relevant country and world events. At this point, I was hard at work, chatting it up in the OOC section of the Discord and personally messaging countries that I thought would or could be aligned with Russia. As you can see, we got Mali, Algeria, and good old Libya working with us. And we even went as far to get a military base established in Mali. This is pretty exciting, and while I only have one infantry there now, if need be, I can have a full stack there. Military bases are a uniquely roleplay thing, because if World War were to break out, not only can your troops spread from your coalition members, but you can also do so from these bases, making them an incredible asset to have. Well, those are the biggest events pertaining to Libya and Russia in the first week. Some smaller events were the border dispute of Kashmir, where India captured Kashmir to the dismay of Pakistan, most people I've heard from think India blatantly broke the RP rules, regardless of if it is historically accurate or not. Spain created a no-float zone in international waters, so instead of starting an early war, I quickly got right of way in Libya and took a different route to Mali. Egypt fired a missile into Syria, and I voted against sanctions on Egypt. Iran and I got into a little bit of a disagreement, but we figured things out in the end, and I am trying to get some influence in South America. But I may have to reverse a tech trade with Argentina, and Venezuela and Cuba seem to be unfortunately inactive. Now, here is my first big address to the country of Russia and the world. Official news release from Taz. Putin's triumphant return, an address to the nation and world. Recently, Putin recovered from late-stage brain cancer, almost in a miracle success. After recovering at the hospital in Moscow, our president is now in perfect health and ready to lead with an iron fist. He addressed the Federal Assembly in address to the nation and the world as a whole. Here is what he had to say. Initial Address to my people and to the world, I am fully recovered and ready to lead this nation and our allies to a prominent position on the world stage. Things have been a little uncertain in our country recently, and I am here to clarify some things and make others right. Firstly, our main goal as your elected leaders is to ensure security and safety for our people. We will continue to improve our infrastructure and invest in the AFRF, for a safeguard against Western hostility. As we have seen recently, some NATO member states have been becoming increasingly hostile towards us, so it is clear we must prepare for what may result from their aggression against our citizens and be more vocal about our goals. NATO, the UN, and the West. While we are not at a state of Cold War like in times past, tensions are rising as a result of Western aggression. Recently, a military convoy was chartered to move through international waters en route to Mali, our ally, but both Spain and Italy spat in our face and threatened initiating world war. Fortunately, we found a better route, 
flying through the mainland of Africa. We have had a military presence in the Mediterranean in times past, and nothing has changed but the West's twisted perception. Do Italy and Spain speak the quiet part out loud, or are they foolishly speaking out of line? We would like an answer to this. On another note, we will continue to support our allies and protect our national interest. In the 1990s, NATO assured us that they would not move another inch eastward, and that broken promise is severely hindering our attempts towards peace. We want to work towards peace and trade, but we will not allow Western meddling. Crimea and other national interest. As it is well known, the people of Crimea elected to join Russia in September of 2014. Russia has also invested in major infrastructure for commerce and daily living, such as the Kerch Strait Bridge. Within 30 days, or potentially sooner, we will complete the annexation of Crimea, to the people's benefit. Other Baltic states have shown interest in fully joining the Russian Federation, and in the coming weeks and months we will continue talks with countries such as Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia. International Ties We continue to grow closer to our allies abroad and our closest neighbors. Asia, the Middle East, Africa, South America. We are expanding our generous hand to invest and trade with those who share our goals of security and global stability. We will have more announcements for specific regions coming soon. In closing, I would like to say that we are seeking to work towards a more stable global environment, and in order to achieve that, we must have the ability to dissuade bad actors from hurting us in any way. And that wraps up week one. Honestly, long-term goals, I would be fine with not having any world war break out, but I'm guessing people would get bored if there wasn't any. Should be interesting to see what happens, and hopefully there isn't any major drama that ruins the fun for everyone. Thanks for sticking till the end, and stay tuned for week two of this Nick roleplay event. Official address, General Kef... And has elected... Putin has recovered from being... Bye.